Today we're going to talk about solving systems of equations. The first thing that probably comes to mind is what on earth is a system of equations? Well, simply put, a system of equations is two or more equations that contain two or more variables. For instance, we see here y equals negative 3x plus 6 and y equals 2x minus 4. Here we have two equations and two variables. The number of equations must be the same as the number of variables. For instance, if you had an equation that had x, y, and z with three variables, you'd have to have three equations. Here we have two variables, x and y, and so we must have two equations. The solution to a system of equations is really the value for x and y that make both equations true at the same time. I'm trying to find the numbers that I could plug into each of those equations that would make both of them work. We solve a system of equations by graphing both of the lines and then finding the point of intersection. That point of intersection are the x and y value that we're looking for. When we construct our graphs, one of three things is going to happen. Either the lines will intersect one time, it will have one intersection, and that's our solution. Or perhaps the lines are parallel and do not intersect. If they don't intersect, they have no points in common, and so we say they have no solution. The third possibility is that the lines end up being the same exact thing. They graph them and they're right on top of each other. If that happens, we say, well, all of the points that are on the first equation are on the second one also, because they happen to be the same line. In that case, we say there's an infinite number or an infinitude of solutions. In our first example here, we have the equation x minus y equals negative 1 and 3x minus y equals 1. We begin by putting these in the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b so that I can easily graph them using the y-intercept and the slope. My first equation turns out to be y equals x plus 1, and I construct that graph. I put the arrows on each end, and I label it. My second equation, 3x minus y equals 1, ends up being y equals 3x minus 1. Again, my y-intercept is at negative 1. My slope is 3. I plot the points connect them with a nice straight ruler, draw the arrows, and label the graph. As I look at the graph, I see that the intersection is at the point 1, 2. Because the intersection is at the point 1, 2, I call that my solution. I've circled it on the graph and labeled it as such. With the solution being 1, 2, that means x is 1, y is 2. If I plug the number in for x, 1, and I plug the number in for y, 2, both equations will be true. Take a look. x minus y equals negative 1. I put the 1 in for x, the 2 in for y, and I get negative 1 equals negative 1. That's clearly true. In the second equation, 3x minus y equals 1, I put the 1 in for x, the 2 in for y, and I end up with 3 minus 2. 1 equals 1. And again, that's clearly true. x equals 1 and y equals 2 are the only numbers that will cause both of these equations to be correct at the same exact time. You can check your solution by substituting or plugging in the values that you find into the original equations to see if they work. Example 2 is for you to try. We have two equations. The first thing we need to do is put them in a slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Then construct the graph, find the point of intersection, and identify your solution. Once you've identified your solution, you should take your x and y values and plug them into the original equation to be sure that they work. Please pause the video here, and then come on back. We'll see how you did. In this example, we ended up with the lines y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals x minus 1. I, I constructed the graphs, plotted the points, drew the lines, labeled them, and put the arrows on each end. I found the point of intersection at 0, negative 1. That means x equals 0, y equals negative 1. 
I can plug them into both equations to see if it works out, and it does in both cases. And so the point 0, negative 1, or x equals 0, y equals negative 1, is the solution to this system. Remember, the solution are the x and y values that cause both equations to be true at the same time. Example 3 is also for you to try. Please pause the video here, then come on back. We'll see how you did. Let's take a look. My two equations happen to be y equals 1 half x minus 1 and y equals negative 2x plus 9. Once again, I constructed the graphs very carefully. I plotted the points, connected them with a ruler, put arrows on both ends, and labeled the equation. Then I identified the point of intersection. They intersect at the point 4, 1. The values that will make both of these equations true at the same time are x equals 4 and y equals 1. Once again, you can verify that's correct by plugging those numbers into each equation and seeing if it works out. There are some special cases. We talked about what would happen if lines were parallel or if lines happen to be on top of each other, meaning they were the same line. Take a look at this example here, example 4. They give us two equations, y equals 2x minus 5 and 4x minus 2y equals 10. The first thing I do is get them in a slope-intercept form. When I do that, I notice my second equation comes out to be y equals 2x minus 5. That's exactly the same equation as the first one. So when I graph these, both of the lines will be right on top of each other. Pick a point on one of the lines, and it's automatically on the other. Pick a set of values that works in the first equation, it's automatically going to work in the second equation. Why? Because the two equations are the same. When this happens, we say that the system has an infinite number of solutions or an infinitude of solutions. So whenever you have two equations that end up being the same exact thing, you have an infinite number of solutions. Find a pair of numbers that works in the first one, and it's guaranteed to work in the second one. The last special case is if we have lines that are parallel. Once again, I have to get them in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. I did that, and here are my two equations, y equals 2x minus 5 and y equals 2x minus 4. Notice that the slope in each of these is 2. Because the slope is the same, we know they must be parallel lines. Let's construct the graph. I carefully plotted the points from the first equation, used the slope to plot additional points, connected them with a ruler, and labeled the graph. I then did the same thing for the second equation. Notice here we have parallel lines just as we knew we would. Since the lines never intersect, they have no points in common. It's great to find a pair of numbers, an x and a y, that work in the first one, but they're not going to work in the second one find any pair that works in the second one, it's guaranteed not to work in the first one. Notice the graphs have no points at all in common. Here we say the system has no solution. So here's what you need to know. First of all, to solve a system of equations, what you need to do is begin by constructing a graph. Put the equation in the slope-intercept form, find the points of intersection. If the graphs are parallel and do not intersect, we say that they have no solution. If the graphs happen to be the same line, they have an infinite number of solutions. Remember, a system of equations is simply two or more equations that have two or more variables. We're looking for the values that make them both true at the same time. Although there are many different methods that we'll study to solve systems of equations, graphing is a great method and it works in many applications.